Hey everybody, Dave here. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use active accessibility in Blue Prism Chrome automation. If you aren't familiar, let me show you why this is a thing. In Blue Prism Chrome automation between 6.3, when it was introduced, up to 6.10, which is the latest version of Blue Prism, you can't use active accessibility as a spy mode when you're doing browser-based Chrome automation. So assume that you've created an object in Blue Prism, you've set up the application model as a browser based Chrome automation. So over here you'll have various elements that are using different spy modes. So let me show you which spy modes are available. If I click identify and I go over to this web-based application, I'm going to hit alt to cycle through all of the options. First we get browser mode, Win32, UI automation mode, region mode. And those are the four options that we have. If you worked with Internet Explorer automation, you may remember that we also had the option of using active accessibility. Just a quick thing to mention, active accessibility is kind of the older version of UI automation. Essentially, UI automation is supposed to be newer and better than active accessibility. However, we still have both as options for interrogating windows on a desktop. I have found that active accessibility can be useful to have in addition to those four spy modes that I just showed you in this window. Before we get to how to use active accessibility in this Chrome automation object, let me give you a quick use case. So let's say that we have this student registration form in this web page, and I'm just making an action in this object that will fill out the form with given information. I have just hard coded some data items. Nothing is coming in through the start stage like we would normally use for input parameters. I've just got it hard coded here. So it's gonna enter these values you see on the left and put them into some of the fields, not all of the fields over on the right in the student registration form. And what that will do is attach to the web application. It's gonna check for the first name field to be there to, to sort of verify, hey, is the page loaded yet? Or here, does it seem like it's ready for me to start entering data? And then it's gonna to write to all the text fields, which would be first name, middle name, last name, street address, street address line two, and then it'll go to the navigate stage and all of the elements it's using in that are gonna be in UIA as opposed to um, all the text fields, which are HTML elements. So it'll go to all the combo boxes, month, day, year of the birth date and the gender, and it'll choose all of those. And then last, it would go and submit the application over there's this submit application button at the bottom and then it would verify that the first name field disappears at the end afterward. But I've got that disabled right now because I don't actually wanna leave the page. So I'm gonna hit go and it should enter that information. You'll see that it's clicking on each of these combo boxes and that's because I found those to be relatively difficult to work with in that the base functionality to select items in the combo boxes didn't work unless I first clicked it. And I'm sure you know if you guys have worked with Anything like this before, you've probably come across the same thing. Uh, sometimes web pages can be a little bit more difficult to work with. So I have entered the information into the page. I would next click submit application, but we'll leave that for now. In here, you'll see that I have named each of the elements based upon the type of spy mode that I used. So first name, middle name, last name, street, uh, line one and line two are all HTML mode. And those are the text fields that I worked with. Initially, I did use these for birth date, month, day, year, and gender. I used HTML mode, but I found that it didn't actually function correctly. It wouldn't actually enter the data into those fields. And that's fine. That happens a lot of times. So instead, I used UIA mode. In this case, it worked out just fine. I didn't need to go as far as wanting to use active accessibility. So it didn't, it's not 100% necessary to use it in this situation, but this is kind of shows when you might want to. Uh, you, one thing I don't like about UIA mode is that there's not really any way to validate through the attributes available that we're working with the right window. And something that I like about active accessibility is that usually there is a window text attribute that lets us make sure we're on the right window before we click on a button. Let me show you that now. So the way to turn on active accessibility in a Chrome automation object is to actually just change the application type temporarily. So I'm going to click OK to go out of this. 
So make sure that you have reset the object so that you can detach from it and then go into application modeler. In application modeler, go to the root node, click on application wizard at the bottom right. And then we're going to go through this application modeler wizard, pretty much just clicking next, 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 all the way to the end, except for this second screen. You'll see a browser based application. It might look a little different for you, depending on what version of blue prism you're on, but click windows application to switch to that. Click next, 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 all the way to the end. Use some method to attach the object to the application. You can sometimes do that in application modeler, depending on the options you chose. But the easiest way for me is I just have an attach stage that with a navigate stage on it, and it is using attach action on the root node here to attach to the application. And I use the window title that you can see up here. Uh, and in this case, it's got space hyphen space Chrome, Google Chrome, because that's, that's there, it's just invisible. And then the process name is, is Chrome. I'm just going to set next stage on this navigate attach and I'm going to step over it. And so now it's attached to this application. I'm going to go back into application modeler and create a new element. Click identify. I'm just going to change the mode from win 32 by hitting the alt key. I'm going to go past UI automation mode, and now we've got accessibility mode. This is active accessibility mode, the same one that's available in Internet Explorer, and the one that's obviously available in Windows application automation. So I'm going to go over it and just choose this month field, and I'm going to drop it into the same group that I have this other one, name it the same thing, but instead I'll name it AA at the end, and let's, let's change the attributes that are selected. I'm going to click the match column to make it organized by which ones are selected and which ones are not. Let's open up this so we can see the values. And I'm going to deselect all the ones that I happen to know typically just are not useful uh, or could make it break later on. So anything that's true, false, typically I'll, un I'll deselect and anything that doesn't look unique. So I'm going to deselect all of these. I'll leave the name and all those. I also want match index and then I'll double click on the match column header. Uh, so now the ones I've got selected are window text, which refers to the title of the window course registration form. And the role of the element is combo box the name of the element, and then I just want match index one because I want to I want to use the first one I come across in the web page so that it's a little bit more performant. Click highlight just to make sure it can find it, and it can. Okay, so if I found that the UIA version of this same element doesn't work very well for some reason, in this case it works great. I'm I'm not having any issues with it, but you could have an issue. In my situation right now, for whatever reason, let's say just to give myself the extra peace of mind that I definitely am working with the right element in the right window, is that I want to restrict the clicking or the working with the window to only actually successfully go past this, uh, this action if it has this window title. So what I can do is go to my workflow and in here where it says uh, select combo box items, I'm going to just go in and try changing one of them to this active accessibility. I'm going to make it do the same thing that it did before, just clicking, doing a global mouse click center on this um, element when it gets to it. So click OK. I'm going to reset that. I'm going to reset the web page. And then I'm going to run this thing again and let's see if it works. All right. So it worked just the same as it did before. There was no difference in how it ran. It's now using the active accessibility element instead of the UI automation element instead. Uh, but obviously, like I said, it's not all that necessary. Uh, now and then though, you may come across a time when UI automation just isn't working on a certain element and you might want to try active accessibility. Maybe in all cases, they both won't work at the same time, but it gives you an extra option just in case. Uh, you may never do this, but it is an important thing, I think, to know more about the tool 
at the very least. So you could try this out, see how it works. And this helps you kind of understand uh, more things about Blue Prism. One thing I do want to mention before we go is that after you have made these changes, there there is something to recognize, okay? Y you have now made a change that uses a feature that other people may not understand. You know that you can use active accessibility in a Chrome automation object, but your coworkers may not know that. Future developers may not know that. So leave a note in the object itself describing what you did. And better yet, potentially just don't use this in an object that's going to go to production because you are making it harder for future developers to maintain it. However, it is a good kind of last resort option that you can use just before you decide to throw everything out and use surface automation when a certain element is being really troublesome. The last thing that I'll mention is that once you add an active accessibility element, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and change the application type back to what it was before. So I'm gonna to go to the root node of the application model again, click on application wizard, and I'm gonna go back to that second screen, choose browser based. And then as I'm going through here, I'm just gonna make sure that I choose all the same things I had originally because some of the options might have defaulted to something else. And the rest of this looks good to me. And so after that, I'll probably go ahead and highlight just to make sure that everything still works. I'll check the AA. All right, everything still looks good. I might leave a note to a developer to let them know what I did. But other than that, I'd say we can call it good to go. Maybe you should use this tomorrow when you go to work and you ask your coworker, who's also a Blue Prism developer, hey, is it possible to use active accessibility in Chrome automation? And when they say no, you can sit down and say, actually, let me show you a little something here. And then you get to win the day and you're welcome. So thanks for watching. And that's how you use active accessibility in Chrome automation.